Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending November 17th. First up, if you checked in with my links below and got a chance to view my supplemental, which I do post usually within 24 hours down in the description box, you will have found out that I was working on this story last week. This is from GeekWire. Xbox Connect has a lot of great features and they're able to recreate 3D worlds, you're able to do a lot with it, but this is kind of, I don't know, spooky. Microsoft filed a patent to be able to use the Xbox using the face detection to detect the number of people in the room and possibly use that to turn off whatever you're watching, whether it be a TV show or a movie, and then decide that you have to pony up some more money if you want to continue watching whatever this feature is. It's just a patent right now, but just thinking about the fact that they want to, the people that are into the copyright and stuff like that just want you to keep paying and paying and paying. That could get to be a pain in the butt to deal with if you're showing a movie to some friends and then a couple of extra friends drop by, they come in the room and then all of a sudden the movie's turned off because they think you're not really uh, paying enough for the amount of viewers. So if you get a chance, check this out. It does talk about the patent filing and the title of the article is Xbox Teams Consumer Detector Would Disconnect freeloading TV viewers and I think that's an appropriate title because I think the music and the television and movie industry do think of us as freeloaders if we don't pay them every time we view something they probably want to as soon as possible get away from us owning DVD discs or something like that we can use on our own time after time and basically we just rent our entertainment so anyway the next article is, this was sent in by my friend Mick from Australia. They just a few days ago had a total eclipse of the sun. And this is from the Courier News, courier.com.au. It's a bunch of pictures of the eclipse. My favorite picture is picture number four, which I will put up here to show you. There's 37 pictures total. And if you want just to find out when the next eclipse will be happening in your area, go to a place called mrecliptes.com. As a matter of fact, Australia is going to be blessed with, I think, three more eclipses. This one occurred in Queensland and uh, the northern part of Queensland, I think the Northwest Territory, Northeast, Northern Territory maybe it's called. Um, and then Australia is going to have three more. We're going to have our first one in 2017. That's going to be in August. Let me get it here. Da -da 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 -da. 2017, August 21st. It's going to be North America, South America, and some parts of the Pacific and Atlantic, too. It also lists, in case you're not aware, it also lists whether the eclipse is a regular total eclipse or an annular eclipse, meaning that there will be a ring of sun visible if it's an annular eclipse. The moon is not perfectly circular in its orbit, so sometimes it is a little bit closer to the Earth and a little bit farther. And when it's a little bit farther from the Earth, it does not completely cover up the sun so there's a little bit of ring a ring of sunshine that you'll actually see in an annular eclipse the one we're going to have in North America in 2017 will be a total eclipse there's also such a thing as a hybrid eclipse too which is part of it depending on where you're located part of it will be an annular eclipse and part of it will be a total eclipse and that's due to the curvature of the earth itself this next one was sent in and this one I've actually reported on before this was sent in by uh, George Herman sent this in to me and it's an article called Super Fast Bike Could Revolutionize Transportation. And the name of the bike, is, the bike is called the E-Rocket. Now this was, this video itself was produced in 2009. I think it actually came into the news around 2008. And actually anything past 2010, I've found no updated news articles about this bike whatsoever. It's a pedal assist bike. So it has an electric motor, but you have to actually turn the pedals. And the idea behind that is pretty good because I know in some parts of the United States, it can actually not have to be registered if you have to actually pedal it to get it to go forward. So in other words, the pedals act as an accelerator. And you have to actually be turning the pedals for it to operate rather than a twist grip throttle or something like that. So you can get away with less licensing and less requirements depending on the state. And probably it's the same way in other countries. Well, the real problem behind this bike that I see, and I saw it at the time when I did the original article, was the cost of it. It's 30,000 euros or $44,000 US, and 
as far as even a rich man's toy, you just couldn't sell enough of them, I don't think, to really make this a venture. And when you compare it against maybe a $3,000 scooter or less, sometimes you can get a $1,500 scooter that will get you 75 to 100 miles to the gallon. You're just, you're just not going to be money ahead in this. So other than a novelty or something, and it didn't even seem to really pan out as a novelty, I just don't see this making it, and I've seen no evidence after 2010 that it really has any more development whatsoever. But I would suggest if somebody, especially among my viewers, some of them are pretty geeky, I would suggest going to Clean Republic, and I'll put the link to that. The actual URL is electric-bike-kit, but the outfit is called Clean Republic. I've actually tested a bike that was set up using this kit when I was visiting my friend in Detroit. He set up, and the nice thing about it is if you want everything to come together in the kit, you pay around $399 for it. You can get it for that kind of a reasonable cost. Now, there's upgrades to lithium batteries that cost more, but the thing I really like about this is you don't need to buy the whole kit. If you're pretty handy and you just want the electric motor, you can go with that and save a lot of money. If you can lace up your own spokes and maybe get a hold of a battery yourself and just want the charge controller and the motor, you can end up doing it for half the cost or maybe even a little bit less than that. But the whole thing with like a 26 or a 24 inch tire with the motor already laced up in there, the charge controller, the battery pack, everything you need, the throttle control, $399. And if you can go in with some friends, the price if you order two or more is even cheaper than that. And I think shipping is around 25 bucks. Now what these bikes usually do, they say they run like certain miles. Like for example, it might say it's 11, 12 miles, but sometimes that's a little bit of a, a generous um, determination of the mileage. I would say probably under the worst of conditions consider about half of that. So if something says it has an 11 mile range, probably consider about a 5 mile range unless you're willing to pedal assist it a little bit and give it some help. I, I have no problem with this Clean Republic one because of the fact it's a planetary gear motor and it's a brushless motor so there's almost no resistance when you just use it as a regular bike without the electric motor and living in the Midwest like I do if you're going downhill or on flat terrain there's no real reason to be using the motor at all it's basically just once in a while when you have you're getting tired or you have a hill to climb or something like that so I would think even if it would get something like five miles you, that wouldn't be a problem whatsoever so yeah if you're handy try it out and if anybody's got any more suggestions or anybody has actually there's the other option of just going to Wally World Walmart's got them for 399 bucks all put together ready to go now it's a heavy steel bike so that's another thing that really limits your range too because of all the weight consideration but you can go to Wally World and get one for 399 bucks and look on YouTube their reviews and people say for what it is you it's a pretty good bike you can also get a $45 warranty too so if it, the battery or anything else gives you any problem it'll I think for two years or more they'll replace every, anything or everything that breaks on it so and last up this is a little bit to do with physics well, not a little bit, a lot to do with physics, actually. How a baseball star's tricky pitch strikes out hitters and baffles physicists. This is from Discover Magazine. And I always thought that knuckleballs, when you actually look from a camera view, that it's coming towards you. It seems like a knuckleball dances all around, up and down, side to side. It's not actually doing that. It actually goes on a trajectory. The one thing about the knuckleball is it's not a predictable trajectory. Like a curveball, you either curve it to the left or the right depending on the spin. But with a knuckleball, since there's little or no spin, the trajectory can curve in an, in an unpredictable direction. But they're saying on here the reason why it looks like the thing dances around in the air on its way to the plate is because of the fact of an optical illusion that we're used to seeing the threads on the baseball which are very brightly colored spin a certain way and when they either spin slowly or don't spin at all it gives us an optical illusion of the ball dancing around we're just our eyes are unable our eyes and our brain are not able to really adapt to what's going on and they show you at the bottom of this article you can click click on a link that's called this animation and it shows you an example of a ball trajectory with the shading changing on the ball and because of the shading change, it does look to you like the ball is really traveling in some really odd directions or changing directions, although the ball isn't actually doing that. But check out this animation, and I think they're correct that it may all be just an optical illusion. They suggested doing tests with the threads of the baseball painted white so that you couldn't identify them and see then if a knuckleball actually looks like it's dancing around like it normally does. So check this out. This is from Discover Magazine. And as usual, check down in the description within the next 24 hours. I will be doing 
some kind of updates of what's going on on next week's show or maybe articles that I'm not going to necessarily use in the TDD report, but um, other stuff that might be interesting. So check out with the next 24 hours and see what pops up. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.